deterrence. That's a word that's become familiar to most of us. In the Air Force, deterrence is almost synonymous with SAC, the Strategic Air Command. In locations around the globe, SAC aircraft and missiles remain ready day and night to strike back instantaneously at any would-be aggressor. And yet, all of SAC's strength has little meaning unless there is command and control that is exact, flexible, far-reaching, and dependable. And that's what I'd like to show you now. Bombers, medium, heavy, 1,300 mile per hour. Missiles, air launched, decoy. 6,000 mile range, 9,000 mile range, triple stage. This global armada of the Strategic Air Command is on alert around the clock at more than 85 bases throughout the world. This powerful aerospace force is a vital part of the free world's defense team, a team dedicated to maintaining peace through strength. These tools of war are so intricate in structure, so awesome in potential, that unerring command and flawless control are absolute necessities. Just where and how can such command and control be exercised? It can best be answered by visiting the nerve center of the Strategic Air Command. The Strategic Air Command Control Center is located 10 miles south of Omaha, Nebraska. Beneath this building, some 45 feet or about four stories underground, is the SAC Command Post, the only structure of its kind in the free world. Here at the control center, the SAC elite guard examines everyone's credentials. Only this carefully selected group of men is authorized to wear this distinctive beret and this special belt with bone-handled pistol. Those whose credentials are in order are cleared for admission to the SAC control center. This underground labyrinth, enclosed in thick concrete, will withstand any type of attack except a direct hit by a nuclear weapon. Heavy, lead-shielded doors open into passageways which lead into the command post. TV receivers permit a visual check of all persons entering. In this large area is the operations map room, where all information about the SAC force of missiles and aircraft is posted on maps nearly two stories high stretching about half the length of a football field. From this command balcony, the commander-in-chief with his staff would control the SAC force in time of war. Information needed to direct SAC's operations is reflected on 49 of these large panels. Behind the panels you see here are up-to-date emergency war plans, ready for instant implementation. Register-type clocks display the local time in key cities around the world. The red clock reflects elapsed time of major operations. Closed-circuit television cameras are used throughout the day to facilitate up-to-the-minute briefings on the status of SAC's far-flung force of missiles and bombers. To the commander-in-chief and his staff, this constant knowledge provides the basis for making rapid, accurate decisions should an emergency arise. So you see, everything is planned to eliminate wasted seconds which could spell the difference between victory or defeat. Inside this glass enclosure is the actual control room. A senior controller, always a colonel, is on duty at this master console 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The senior and his duty controllers have at their fingertips immediate access to all of SAC's global communication systems. Television provides the SAC control room with constant visual contact with the Global Weather Central. Round the world weather information is transmitted 24 hours per day. More than two million weather items are checked daily in the SAC Global Weather Central. 
existing or forecast weather for any point in the Northern Hemisphere is always available in this unique center. High-speed computers capable of solving more than one quarter of a million problems per second are used in making forecasts. Maps drawn by the computer are rapidly transmitted to all SAC units on four continents. Another high-speed computer is used to assist in working out complex war plans. The computer provides rapid information on current operations, figures the paths or trajectories for all long-range missiles, and plays a major role in war plan development. In the event of hostilities, the computer would provide up-to-the-minute information on the status of enemy or SAC operations. This nuclear snifter atop the control center is highly sensitive to radiation, blast, and heat. The antenna would trigger a warning light and immediately begin the sequence of closing off the underground from the outside world. Access to decontamination locks is provided to personnel entering the building from contaminated areas. Inside these locks are dressing rooms, showers, and fresh clothing, which would enable personnel to enter completely free of deadly radiation. If for any reason commercial power was lost, these huge generators would supply emergency power within seconds. If evaluation of enemy activity should prompt the use of the SAC alerting system, first in operation would be this famous red telephone. Simply by picking up this phone, instantaneous and simultaneous contact is made with every SAC control room around the world. A quick coded message would set in motion emergency war plans already in the hands of each combat wing. Lights on this panel flick off as each combat unit acknowledges the message. This phone sets up three-way conferences between the SAC control room, the Air Force Command Post, and NORAD to ensure each is aware of the actions taken. This yellow phone would relay the go-to-war decision if made by the President and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Only the President can authorize the use of nuclear weapons. Should the war order be given, SAC would immediately launch its missile force and would pass the go code to its airborne aircraft. One of the systems used for this message would be the powerful short order single sideband radio network, which guarantees uninterrupted continuity of SAC communications. Over this hookup, the controller would seize four 45,000 watt stations located hundreds of miles apart. Properly positioning their antennas, he could contact SAC aircraft and ground stations all over the world under any condition. Another worldwide single sideband radio hookup, the SAC Commander's Network, enables key SAC officers in flight to talk with their office or other commanders from any spot on the globe. During such critical operations, with perhaps the fate of the free world hanging in balance, even further precautions would be taken to prevent a slip up. Each voice message sent by telephone and radio would be backed up with a written message transmitted to the floor above the teletype communication center. Here, circuits connect the SAC control center with all its bases. These teletype printers operate at extremely high speed. But despite the fact it only takes seconds to launch the SAC force, suppose a nuclear weapon did destroy this underground bastion, before that vital message was transmitted, what would happen? Several alternate control centers are equipped and prepared to assume control over the entire SAC force. In the unlikely event that all of these command posts are destroyed simultaneously, SAC still has control by means of an airborne command post. This communications laden KC-135 jet tanker would be manned by a small staff of operations and communications specialists under the command of a SAC general. 
Therefore, if all other control facilities were knocked out, this nearly invulnerable airborne command post would monitor the progress of operations and would direct the SAC force. Now you have seen SAC's command and control system and how it functions. SAC can give the word which would quickly launch the most powerful military force in history. If this time should ever come, in far-flung regions all over the world, dedicated professional crews trained to the ultimate in SAC operations and tactics would be on the go. ready alertness combined with immediate action is possible because of the careful planning and efficient functioning of the men in SAC's command post, backed up with the latest techniques and equipment. Exercising such command and control over its vast array of aerospace power, the Strategic Air Command continues its role as a most vital part of the free world's defense team. A counterforce which is our strongest hope for preserving world peace. Thank you for joining us in this brief look into the airman's world. The world of jets and missiles, the aerospace world. This has been just one of many stories about your United States Air Force, about the people who keep this force in being today and who will go on making new stories for tomorrow.